The economy has cha changed dramatically in the last 35 years. There's been a major process of conscious process of financialization of the economy and uh, uh, kind of uh, exporting of uh, productive industry. That's very conscious, and this is not a particularly obscure why. Uh, by about that time, it was possible to make more profit in uh, shenanigans of money manipulation than in doing anything productive. And in market societies, uh, people with capital go for what's pro uh, profitable. Uh, one corollary to that was that the political pressure just uh, dismantled the regulatory apparatus uh, with the support of economists, incidentally, working with uh, economic theories that, I mean, it's astonishing that they're not ashamed of themselves. But uh, anyway, that's what happened. Uh, one consequence of this, one aspect of it, is that for roughly 30 years, a little over that, uh, for the majority of the population, wages have, real wages, have pretty close to stagnated. A little growth, but not much. Uh, that's most of the population. Um, uh, families get by with uh, two husband and wife working. We have very limited support systems as compared with other countries, so that means families are in trouble, and that shows up in all kind of ways. Uh, people are, uh, you can keep your income up by uh, uh, asset inflation, you know, just, and by debt. The asset inflation, of course, can't last, so you have repeated bubbles of collapsing. The last one was an $8 trillion housing bubble, which amazingly almost no economist could see. I mean, the trend line in housing prices is going way beyond a hundred year record. There was no reason for it. It was obviously going to burst. That's every, you know, that's the assets of most people. They're in trouble. People are in deep trouble. You know, not trouble like uh, Central Africa, but that's not the way you evaluate your circumstances. You ask, uh, how would I, what should I be able to have in a rich country like this? So people are, and they also see us ostentatious wealth. It's quite striking that the, for, a, for a while after the financial collapse, uh, the super rich were kind of playing it cool, you know, so they weren't not too, try to not be too ostentatious, doesn't look nice. But now it's over. Uh, the New York Times a couple of days ago had a front page article saying, describing exactly this phenomenon, you know, back to great parties, uh, gala events, uh, showing off how rich, rich we are. Uh, uh, another article in the same issue said uh, corporate profits have broken records. Uh, banks have so much money, they don't know what to do with it. Well, you know, people may not know the details, but they can see this, mm -hmm. and they can see what's happening in their own lives. Mm -hmm. uh, in manufacturing industry, uh, um, unemployment's about at the rate of the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And much, I'm, an old, I'm old enough to remember that. Uh, and it was bad, but there was, it was, there was a kind of hopefulness. There was, I know my, my relatives are mostly unemployed workers, but you know, they were not desperate. They were poor, but not desperate, because it looked like something could happen. We could do things together. There's a better future. My seamstress aunts who were unemployed were in the, the garment workers union, and they got some benefits from that, and they also felt that also some educational programs, cultural programs, they felt that we can get out of this working together. People don't feel that now. And those manufacturing jobs are not coming back, not unless we have quite a different social order here. There's plenty of need for them. In fact, what's happening in this respect is sometimes almost surreal. Like, for example, the government effectively owned most of the auto industry for a while, and the policies they were pursuing was closing down plants just like GM had been doing. Uh, at the same moment, uh, the, the Obama's uh, transportation secretary was in Europe uh, traveling around Spain uh, trying to get contracts using stimulus money for Spanish factories to produce high-speed uh, transport for the United States, which we desperately need, as anyone who's taken a train here knows. Uh, that's a, these are things could be produced very well in uh, Michigan and Indiana. Uh, maybe not profitable for the bankers, but certainly good for the workforce and the communities. But that wasn't even considered an option. 
I mean, green technology, which is supposed to be the expanding area. Mm -hmm. Go to China, go to Spain, go to Germany. I mean, uh, investors in the United States, last figures I saw, are uh, investing, I think, about twice as much in China as they are in the United States and Europe combined. And in Germany, Spain, France, there's substantial. And China will presumably be the leader, in, if it isn't already, in uh, wind and solar technology. That Can't that be done here? Sure it can. In fact, a lot of the uh, high technology, the innovations, uh, the ideas come from here. But they're produced there. You know, China's kind of like an assembly plant, which where you the surrounding industrial area in the United States uh, assemble the products that come back here that we buy, but that could be produced here. That takes different social policies. And as long as uh, policy is in the hands of uh, uh, financial institutions and uh, uh, a, a, corp a, 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 a production corporations like, say, General Electric, GM, which are themselves financial institutions, a lot of their business, yeah, they make plenty of money if it's done somewhere else. Thank you.